Well, I went to make dinner tonight. Got some uh, fresh vegetables, a little vegetable medley. And I am trying to make some of these, uh, finish off these fish fillets. And um, the uh, oven is almost done. And I went to check on these. And um, even though it's on, and it's been on for about 15 minutes, these are ice cold. So, I could use the um, bigger oven. Just stick them in there. And, uh, oh, there's the shoes I was looking for. <laughs> I've been looking for those for about a week now. I got caught in the rain and I wanted to dry them off. But, um, anyway, I could use this larger oven, but I didn't want to heat the house up and waste all that energy. So I tried to use the... Uh, toaster oven and I just used it a couple days ago and despite the fact that it's on at over 400 degrees apparently it's just ice cold so maybe this will be easy I don't think toaster ovens are terribly complicated and uh, let me get this thing apart and um, see if it's something simple that I can fix maybe a fuse or you know high resistance in the contacts of the thermostat or whatever else and um, see if I can get it going again. Well I think I figured out what's going on and it's just as I suspected I've got a blown thermal fuse. So we'll go ahead and uh, show that right now with our uh, volt on meter on ohms. And we'll just go across the fuse. and it's completely open. I uh, did go ahead and I jumpered across that fuse and I don't have an infrared thermometer so I can't show you guys but that oven got nice and hot so that's all that's wrong with it. The thermostat looks in good shape, all the wiring looks in good shape, nothing's burned. That's uh, pretty much just as simple as that. The problem is is I don't know if I'll be able to read the uh, specifications on that fuse. So um, I know Radio Shack carries a few of these things, but hopefully I'll be able to source the correct part for that, get that in there, and then get this toaster oven back online. And they do not want you to do what I'm doing right now, and that is fixing this. They want you to throw this thing away immediately and buy a new one. It was hard getting this thing apart. For one thing, you've got um, security Torx bits or Torx screws, and not everybody has the right tool for that. Um, that Torx bit looks just like this. I happen to have that tool. Well, camera won't focus, but you can kind of see it's just got a hole in it. And um, there's another gotcha, and that's this screw right here. This panel, in order for the panel to come off, you have to uh, get this screw out, which screws into the part of the chassis there, which is so weak and flimsy that the clips to hold the plastic in is stronger than the metal. But you can't get to that screw because the front bezel gets clipped on there with no access to the clips. And they're designed to break off, basically, so you have to uh, pretty much destroy the clips on this thing in order to get it off. So it's not going to look like brand new when I get it put back together but uh, I'm thinking it won't be too bad because when I put this back together and put the knobs in there, the knobs are going to act to hold this bezel against this plastic. But um, they did that on purpose. There wasn't any reason to uh, hide the screw behind there like that. They could have just made a, a clip for it. But um, no problem. Went ahead and got it apart anyway, despite the efforts to keep people out of it. And I'm going to go ahead and try to source that part and uh, see if I can get this thing running. Man, it is raining like a cow pissing on a flat rock out there. I'm glad I'm inside. But anyway, due to the uh, magic of editing, not really editing, but turning a camera on and off, uh, I can't remember where I stopped last time, but I think I might have mentioned that there was a thermal fuse in here. And uh, that fuse went ahead and opened up, broke the circuit to the uh, heating elements. 
So um, I went ahead and uh, bridged that together temporarily with an alligator clip and uh, the heating elements ended up heating up, so I know that was the issue. Wasn't any problems in the switches or anything. And I went ahead and got the uh, new parts. And I'm not sure if you guys can see. That's 144, 144 degrees Celsius. That's the what they call the functioning temperature. That's the temperature at which the little piece of wax inside there melts and uh, lets the spring loose and opens up the contacts. So I went ahead and cut that guy out. And the reason I did it like that is because if you look closely, um, these are not standard connectors especially the one on the heating element right there. I don't really have any way reliably to uh, cut this all out and reconnect it so I went ahead and gave myself as much of the lead as possible from the old fuse and uh, went ahead and got new fuses which are direct replacement I hope you can tell 144 Celsius and uh, they were a bit tricky to find. I mean, Radio Shack had these fuses, but they uh, didn't have the exact temperature that was required. Uh, they had 141, and then they went way up to 158 or something like that. So I went ahead and uh, got these guys from DigiKey. Didn't take too long to get here. And I think what I'm going to do, I went ahead and ordered a couple of spares, because I'm pretty sure this might happen again. And uh, I think what I'll do is I got some crimp connectors I found in the garage and I pulled off the insulating pieces from these crimp connectors because we're dealing with uh, fairly high temperatures and although those connectors would probably work I don't want to take any chances of the, the plastic melting and causing problems so I went ahead and pulled these connectors apart and I think what I'll do is um, go ahead and apply one here and here and then on both ends of the fuse, cut the fuse a little bit shorter as much as I can. And that way if this happens again, I can just uh, take out that fuse, crimp on two more connectors, pop the fuse back in there, and I'm back in business. I did have a little bit of carnage from the uh, front faceplate here. I might have mentioned that in the last uh, segment. Uh, this is not really meant to come apart, so this was kind of sacrificial. I do have some of the clips left like on the bottom there and then on the on this side and the rest of the carnage is right there this plastic is very brittle it's just a one-time use only but I think that's a small price to pay for fixing this thing and getting more use out of it and besides I think once the other uh, two knobs are on here that's going to act to hold that thing against the uh, the bezel there and I pretty pretty much won't even know the difference so uh, let me go ahead and hook all this stuff together and get it installed in the oven and um, see what we got going on. Well that didn't turn out quite like I had planned. That's why I've got a couple of backup options but uh, turns out that uh, these connectors here are just a little bit uh, designed for a wire size that's a little bit too large and so when I went ahead and crimped those onto the thermal fuse lead it didn't really make good contact and actually came off in my hands. So I had to scrap that idea of making that fuse replaceable and went ahead with the uh, another idea I had with these telephone butt connectors. These guys are uh, designed obviously for a much smaller gauge wire and uh, of course to prevent uh, fire or any kind of damage I went ahead and uh, stripped off the insulation and uh, what I ended up with is this and um, that's a much more solid connection that's not going anywhere and I got all the specifications facing outward so I can see it next time this happens if it happens and um, looks like that we'll be in good shape it's interesting that this uh, burner lead comes directly out of here through that thermal fuse so that's how it's measuring the temperature in there so um, I got these leads as short as I could on the fuse to make sure that the length here is as close to uh, factory original as possible. 
And uh, so now this thing is basically repaired to uh, OEM specifications. And uh, now the true test will be is uh, can I put this thing back together and uh, will it uh, run long enough to cook something and uh, not blow that fuse again. So let me get this thing put back together and we'll find out the final results. Well, let's see what we got going on in the oven now. It's been about 15 minutes for cooking these uh, fish fillets. And I got to use my right hand actually. <laughs> Turns out. Let's see what we got. Oh yeah. Sounds good and smells better. I think that's a definite uh, win for uh, fixing that toaster oven. And uh, this plastic bezel ended up being pretty solid still. I mean it's just a little bit loose but not even any cracks around there so the oven basically is put that together just like it was. Cooked the fish really good. Now all I gotta do is uh, heat up all the vegetables and everything and uh, we'll be in good shape. And uh, not too bad. The, the, the cost of the parts were a total of three dollars and nine cents from DigiKey and I'm not really sure but what toaster ovens are running at these days but I'm fairly certain they cost more than three dollars and nine cents so uh, those, those what the thermal fuses look like if you guys are interested and uh, just having stuff around the house and some various tools and about maybe a half hour's worth of work and waiting for the parts to come in I got a working toaster oven again that should last me hopefully for a good number of years but uh, now for more important things, and that's to enjoy the dinner.